Broadway's My Beat, from Times Square to Columbus Circle, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway's My Beat, with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. It's the journey to the end of all the other streets in the world, this Broadway. You turn a corner and you're there. You walk slowly and you lean your heart against it. Then something explodes in your face and you run and you're one of the crowd. You shop for the kicks, the bargains and the heartbreak. And inevitably you find it, one or the other, like I did. On the street of the tired apartment houses. A street leased on the premise that both parents should work so they can come home, smile bravely at each other, beat their children, then snore. It was 7 p.m. when I walked up to the second floor landing of the El Royale Apartments in answer to a call. Detective Mugovan was waiting for me. There he is, Danny, on the floor over by the railing. Uh Uh-huh. Who is he? Hey, why don't you people break it up? Go on, get back to your apartments. You read all about it in the paper. Who is he, Mugovan? Name's Harold Clark. Lives apartment 2C. Married. No children. Dead from 238 slugs in his chest. That's who he is. Who killed him? Tenant named Lloyd Ramey. Had the apartment right here, 2A. Blasted Mr. Clark right through the door. Two shots connected with both. Here, see? Two shots right through the door here and here. Uh Uh-huh. What about Lloyd Ramey? Killer? Nothing. He shot Clark and took a fire escape exit through his own room. What else, Muggerman? What about the rest of the tenants? Do they know anything about Ramey? I ask them, they shake their heads. No. Okay, ask them some more. You said Clark was married. Yeah, his wife is home. Thanks. Mrs. Clark. It's the police, Ms. Clark. I've got... Please come in. Excuse the way I look. Of course. Mrs. Clark, What do you want me to say to you? Excuse the way I look? Excuse the way the apartment looks? The way my husband looks lying out there in the hall in his undershirt? What else can I say to you? I'm sorry about it. I've got to ask you some questions. I know all about that. Here, see? Right here. Detective. Did you ever own a gun? Suspect. No, sir, I did not. Detective. Did you shoot this man? Suspect. No, sir, I did not. Just like in these true-type detective story magazines. I read them all the time. I know all about what you've got to do. All right, then. It'll make it a lot easier. If you're going to ask me, did I shoot my husband, I'm going to say, no, sir, I did not. We know you didn't. Don't be too sure. I was in Lloyd Ramey's apartment when it happened. Oh? Tell me about it. I went across the hall to borrow some tea bags from Mr. Ramey because my husband likes tea. I must have stayed more than ten seconds because my husband got panicky and came after me. He knocked on the door. Mr. Ramey didn't even answer. He pulled out a gun and shot. How well did you know Ramey? For tea bags. With my husband, tea bags means I'm not being true blue. Your husband was wrong, wasn't he? My husband is dead. I guess that's pretty wrong. He knocked on the door and yelled to open it or he'd break it down, and now he's dead. Because he liked tea. Dr. Sinsky, the technical boys are here, Danny. Oh, good. I'm through here. Tell them to go to work. Okay. Now, look, you people. Why don't you break it up? Why don't you go home to your own apartment? They stood there, the tenants of the El Royale apartment, summoned by the violence, drawn by the clamor of the violent dead, drawn by the cold wind that had touched their throats and led them to the warmth of the spectacle. A child's harsh voice ordered his father to hoist him to his shoulder so he could see, could see better. The father slapped him hard across the mouth. The child wailed and scurried down the corridor, and the father looked after him, his eyes filled with pain and confusion. And then emptying of these things, forgetting the child, remembering death. Mugovan had got one thing out of the tenants, the fact that Lloyd Ramey, the murderer, was known to a certain party, the party being the Wilkins Rental Agency on West 58th Street. The forms you had to fill out to get an apartment from them, your life was on a piece of paper in a wooden file box. Go ask Mr. Wilkins about Lloyd Ramey. He'll have it in the box. Mr. Wilkins did. Committed murder, did he? It just goes to show you, Mr. Clover, you never know, you never know. 
You found it? Mm-hmm, I found it. It's right here to hand. Man tries his best, Mr. Clover. Tries to find a select clientele for his clients. Tries to judge a man by his clothes, his shifting eyes, the woman hanging on his arm. Good wrist, bad wrist. Man asks himself... Mr. Wilkins. Please, you're eating into my time. Permit me to eat into yours. Things they put on the questionnaire on the form so often lie, sheer lies. All I want is... I know, I know. Information on one of my tenants, a murderer. Whenever you feel up to it, Mr. Wilkins. Thank you. According to my files, Lloyd Ramey is a man I never set eyes upon. But you just told I me... I know, that... I know. But sometimes in my profession, as it must be in yours, there are extenuating circumstances. Like what, Mr. Wilkins? Like this letter from Lloyd Ramey. Let me see it. Patience, patience, Mr. Clover. This letter is an extenuating circumstance because with it came the money for a year's lease on apartment 2A, El Royal Apartments. We find questionnaires, personal interviews, unnecessary when a gentleman has the foresight to... What else does it have? A few well-wrought phrases stating that he, Mr. Lloyd Ramey, had seen our ad in the news, had gone to the apartment, found it suitable to his needs, and enclosed find eight uh, uh, years' rent. Dated September 3rd, 1950. From that day forward, we rejected all other applicants. Give it to me. I must, I suppose, hate to part with it, this letterhead... It brought joy into our lives here at the agency. Isn't it joyful? <laughs> yes, Berkey Siegmiller, tattoos, and the slogan, what you want, where you want it. Joyful, huh? <laughs> I'll be right with you as soon as I finish with this sailor. Now, hold still, sailor boy. My name's Danny Clover. Hiya, Danny. You can look at the patterns on the wall. We're having a special this week on Mother. You know, M is for the, O is for I'm the... I'm from the police. Well, I can give you a special on that, too. P is for the, O is for the... What's the matter with you, sailor boy? Be brave. Is your name Berkey Siegmiller? Yeah. Hey, you ain't got that tattoo look in your eye. You don't want to get tattooed, do you? I want some information. Look, sailor boy. If you don't hold still, you're going to have the strangest-looking mermaid on your chest in the Navy. The kind of information you want, Danny. A man came in here about four weeks ago and used your stationery here. Stationery from your place. Oh, yeah, I recall the request. man dropped in for a touch-up job of a coiled rattlesnake. And he asked me for a sheet of paper. When I was done, I gave it to him. You got the one I gave him in your hand. Had you ever seen the man before? No. What's he done? Murder? That's a new one. Did an admiral once, but never a murderer. Okay, button up your shirt, sailor boy. Have you any idea where I can find this man? There's no use you asking me any more questions, Danny, because I couldn't give you any more answers. Just tattoos. That's all I give. Danny? Danny, it is I, you're ever faithful. Hello, Gino. Likewise, I'm sure. Well? You uh, seem lost, Danny. Huh? Lost in some reverie into which perhaps it is implied that I intrude my face. That's all right. You can stay. Thank you. Well? Yeah, sure it's all right. What's eating you? Danny, the rumor is making its way through the nooks and crannies of police headquarters that you have lately visited a tattoo parlor. Oh, rumor is right. Danny, you have not gone and indulged yourself in some mad whim or other. You have not. You don't approve, Gino? Well, it is not for me to approve or not to approve, Danny. It is only that in a like circumstance, Mike Schreck, the bald-headed miracle detective from Philadelphia... He's tattooed? You guessed it. In the middle of his forehead, the tattoo of a snow crystal, imprinted there by a high llama hailing from Tibet. And Mike Shrek has regretted this indiscretion all his life. So? So? Well, I don't want this same thing to happen to you, this regret. Danny, I won't breathe a word if you... I know I can trust you, Sergeant. Now, in the matter of Lloyd Ramey, you have something for me? Gino. In the matter of Lloyd Ra... Oh, oh, yeah. In the matter of Lloyd Ramey, the usual standard operating procedure. All points bulletins, terminals watched in relays. Nothing. 
Hey, you can't just barge in here, lady. You have hey, it's to... it's all right, Gino. You want to see me, Miss Clark? Not particularly. I only thought that if you were cracking your skull over the murder of my husband, maybe I could help. Sit down, Miss Clark. There isn't time to be la da with me, Mr. Clover. If you want to capture him, you better hurry. He was just beginning the soup course when I spotted him. Lloyd Ramey? Where? Don't panic yourself, Mr. Clover. Not Lloyd Ramey but a man who was often a caller at the apartment of Lloyd Ramey. Ramey was such a secretive type, I took mental notes on his callers. Where is this man? Beginning a meal at the Hotel Adams. I dropped in there myself for a bite. While waiting for a table, I spotted him. Who could eat? I ran quick to you with a hot clue clutched tight in my little hand. You want it? You'll point him out to me, won't you, Mrs. Clark? Why else do you think I missed my dinner? <laughs> There he is, Mr. Clover. Which one? There, near the back of the room. Man sitting at the small table against the wall. You wait here. Mind if I sit down, mister? Mm-hmm. Oh, sit down. Have a drink, go ahead. Sit down, sir. Thanks. I'm from the police. Why don't you bring the lady, too? I see you come with the lady. Go back and get the lady... I'm not feeling so good, but who needs it to talk with a lady? Lady. You're sick. Sick and drunk. Sick. Drunk. Go. Go get the. get the lady. Hey. We'd better get you to. his head up from the table and his eyes were open, open and staring and not reacting to anything in the world and his part of it. The maitre d' hurrying over the polite music, the finger bowls and the demitasse and the fillets, none of it registered. He just slumped to the floor. I knelt over him, felt for a pulse. There wasn't any. He was dead. Listening to Broadway's My Beat, written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, and starring Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. This Sunday, Frank Sinatra joins Arthur Godfrey and the other fine entertainers and programs to be heard on CBS in the afternoons. His new show is called Meet Frank Sinatra, and you'll hear members of Frank's studio audience being interviewed by the voice and telling him their favorite songs. At their request, Frank either will sing the song himself or play a famous record. Meet Frank Sinatra will bring you a surefire entertainment for a whole hour, starting this Sunday afternoon on most of these same CBS stations. Broadway is generous in many ways. It offers you for free its own private set of values, for instance. The essence of a man's life, his worth, measure it in terms of darkness and light. Big man, big Mazda bulb shining bright. So many yards of neon hissing his name into the screaming night. Little man, his proper share of darkness. A spectacular with burned out bulbs sighing into nothing. Harold Clark, the man shot down because he had pounded on a door. That was a little man. The man at a dinner table who hadn't recognized the feel of death, who thought he was only drunk. Also a little man as witness how discreetly the management tried to hide his dying from the diners. Hardly worth Broadway's notice. Hardly worth interrupting the choice of a pastry. But at police headquarters, he found his importance. Under a microscope, in a test tube, a hooded light bulb shining down on his death, giving it shape, shining down on the white-coated figure who ran it through his fingers, analyzed it. This is it, Danny. This is what did it to him. The cliché of poison. It bores you, huh, Gordon? Well, if you ask me, Danny, I'll tell you. Such an unoriginal poison, cheap, common. It can be boring. How was it administered? I've been waiting for you to ask me. Get off it, Gordon. Well, you surprised me, Danny. I should have thought it was normal routine that you ask questions at the hotel bar. It was slipped into his drink. I have proof positive. You didn't ask questions? To make you any happier, yeah, I did. The bartender couldn't remember him. Couldn't remember anybody. That's why he's worked this so long, he said, because he couldn't remember faces. <laughs> tough. That makes it tough on you, doesn't it, Danny? 
You think Lloyd Ramey did our fellow in? What else have you got, Gordon? It's all over there in that pile. Help yourself. You do it, Gordon. Because you're a lieutenant? Still? All right. I'll do it for you, lieutenant. His clothes, tailored, his wallet, alligator, his driving license, wrapped in cellophane. It says he had brown eyes, was 5'11", age 36. It says he lived at 2354, he's 47, that his name was Henry Gaynor. You can stop me any time, lieutenant. Nothing else? Nothing. Except this package of orange lifesavers. Have one, Danny. <laughs> Come on, have one. I'll analyze them. They're harmless. Orangey. Goodbye, Gordon. Not at all. Lloyd Rainey, Lieutenant. <laughs> How are you doing on that one? Oh, you're very welcome, Lieutenant. <laughs> Good morning. Hello. My name's Danny Clover. Well, let's come the... in. Chat inside. There, now. Isn't this better? Uh, sit down. Try that chair over there, the flowered creton. Thanks. I started to say I was from the police. Well, I don't understand. There's nothing to understand. Police, that's who I work for. But why do you want to see me? By the way, who are you? Tommy Lawrence. You live here with Henry Gaynor? I did live here with Henry Gaynor. He's dead. I read about it in the late editions. Oh. Oh, that's why. Henry's dead, and you're the police, and you've come here. Oh. That's why. That's why. Tell me about Henry. Well, I advertised in the paper for a clean living man to share this apartment. I chose Henry. Uh huh. But I made a mistake. I learned not to like him. That's why I'm not outraged or worried or sorry that Henry's dead. He did nothing but dote on girls. He and his buddy. Buddy? Well, that chaser, Frank Muir. If you want his address, I don't know it. But his phone number's around. You think you can trace it? Frank Muir. I tracked him down where I were you. He's the cause of it all. Poor Henry. I detached him from his Creton grief, made him look for Frank Muir's phone number. He found it on a pad next to the phone. He did that by lifting up a French doll, and there it all was. Surprise. I phoned Muir. He was at home. I told him to stay there. He said he had a date. I tinkled my badge into the receiver. He said he'd break the date. When I got there, he was still doing it. Come on in, Mr. Clover. Mix yourself up a happy, happy at the bar. And this lady I'm talking to on the phone, <laughs> she's bitter. She don't believe I got a rendezvous with a policeman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, honey. I swear it's only a cop. A cop? What kind of a cop? I know all about those females. For 20 minutes, you've been holding up the phone, honey. Here. here. Yeah, I'll prove it to you. Prove it to me. Yeah, yeah. Say something to my lady. Prove to her you're only a man cop. Hang up. But, well, look, be a pal. Hang up. Between the two of you, she'll, she'll fracture me. I don't do this sort of thing the ladies normally. You understand, Mr. Clover? You had a friend, Henry Gaynor. You can say that again. Head is just a word. I read in the papers how a friend I once had is now gone. When did you see him last? <laughs> you think I killed him? When Henry and me had such snazzy times together on blind dates? On with your eyes open dates? When did you see him last? On the occasion when I turned over Mrs. Ellen Clark to him. What? You heard me. That was three, maybe four Saturdays ago. I make it four. Mrs. Clark was one of your lady friends <laughs> like... <laughs> Don't get me wrong, Mr. Clover. Mrs. Clark was, uh, how do you classify? A smile filled with hidden meanings. Uh, the touch of a knee under a checkered tablecloth. That was all Mrs. Clark was to me. That's why you handed her over to your buddy? Uh -huh. Wrong again. You see that plaster cast up there on the mantelpiece? That's courtesy of irate husband, Mr. Clark. He found me once with his missus waiting to catch a bus. He clobbered me, broke my arm. Care to autograph it, Mr. Clover? All my friends, eh? No? Oh, you'll excuse me. It's undoubtedly... <laughs> Danny. 
How you feeling? Yeah, there have been better times, Mugovan. There always are. Seen the papers? Uh-uh. Haven't had the time. You should have looked. What have you got in your mind, Mugovan? You don't have to bite my head off because I suggest you read the papers. It's got a picture of Lloyd Ramey on the front page. What? Yep. Only his name isn't Lloyd Ramey. The name is George Harvey. Something, huh? You want me to invest a nickel in a newspaper, or you want to tell me why? We took the two bullets from the body of Harold Clark and checked the riflings of what we got on file. We didn't have anything. So? Sent them to Washington. FBI check. Sent a wire back. They got what the two bullets matched. Two more bullets. Where'd they get them? One of them out of a murdered bank clerk of Vincennes, Indiana. The other from a woman shot down during a liquor store robbery in uh, St. Louis. Both shootings done by George Harvey. Wanted by Indiana, Missouri police for murder. What does it do to you, Danny? There's a whole lot, Mugovan. May I come in? What are you looking for, mister? I'm Joseph Gribness. May I come in? What's on your mind, Mr. Gribness? Uh, thank you. Who do I see about the reward? Reward? Yeah, it says right here in the paper, reward. And don't you people try to talk your way out of it either. You see? Right here on the front page. Have you seen this man, it says. I've seen this man. What about the reward? If there's a reward, we'll see that you get it. Where did you see him? <laughs> Where'd you see him, yes. Where's the reward? The man in charge of the reward department's just stepped out. Oh, wait. Sure, wait. But if George Harvey escapes while you're waiting, you'll be held for... What'll he be held for, Mugovan? Aiding and abetting a criminal. Aiding and abetting a criminal. Aiding and abetting a criminal. The man whose picture appears in the paper moved in this morning next door to me. Hotel Hobart, into the hall, third floor. No, I'll, I'll, I'll just wait. Down the end of the hall, the man said. That's what Mr. Griven has said, Danny. Here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, what do you want? Come on, open up, Harvey. Move away from the door, Mugovan. Open the door, I'll break it down. You cops still there? Or are you dead? Shoot the lock off the door, Mugovan. I'll kick it open. Let's go. Harvey. No one's home. Come back later. Danny in that hallway. Yeah. You better call an ambulance, Mugovan. Okay, Danny. And turn the radio on. What do you know? There was somebody home. Can you talk, Harvey? I just talked, didn't I? You cops been chasing me all over the country just to chat with me. Advertise me in post offices, detective magazines, and a radio. Why did you kill Harold Clark? You pounded on my... on my door. You saw what happened. I thought he was a cop. He yelled open the door, I'll break it down. Cops talk like that. Did you poison a man named Henry Gaynor? I'm losing blood, cop. Pity me. Did you poison a man named Henry Gaynor? Poison? <laughs> uh, never in my life. Henry Gaynor? Never in my life. One more question, Harvey. Was Mrs. Clark in your apartment when you killed her husband? You kidding? That's one of the tough things about running all the time. You never have time for a dame. She wasn't in my apartment. You're sure? I'm confessing a murder, mister. But don't try to book me for a dame in my apartment. Because Mrs. Clark wasn't there. <laughs> Yes? Oh, it's you, Mr. Clover. I know, you've come to tell me you've got my husband's murderer. Did you bring me some good news like that? I'll come in and tell you about it, Mrs. Clark. I was just going to ask you to do that. My apartment looks better now, doesn't it? How does a woman feel when the man she loves is murdered? I felt numb at first, but I'm getting better. Harold, my husband, was a jealous man. Harold was always... I'm not talking about your husband. I'm talking about Henry Gaynor. 
Who? The man you poisoned after he refused to have anything to do with you. You poisoned him and brought me there to watch him die. You're crazy. Before you killed Gaynor, did you tell him how you arranged your husband's murder? You invited yourself in, now invite yourself out. What are you doing? What are you walking around my place for? Place looks nice. Thanks. Get out. Really looks a lot better. Neat. Things in order. Where are all those true type detective story magazines? I gave them away. A man came, offered me a dollar for all those magazines I had. I gave him five bundles wrapped in twine. Did you save one of them? What? The one with a picture of George Harvey, alias Lloyd Ramey. What did it say under his picture? That he was armed, that he was wanted for murder, that he was dangerous, not to approach him, but to notify the police? Get out of here. You knew your husband was bitterly jealous. You goaded and made him believe you were carrying on with a neighbor across the hall. Get out. You sent him over there knowing that trigger-happy killer would shoot him as soon as he knocked on the door, and Harvey did. I'll kill you. Harvey said you were never in his apartment. You were too frightened of him ever to talk to him. Let's go, Mrs. Clark. Take your hands off me. I said, let's go, Mrs. Clark. I had it all. I had it in the palm of my hand until you, you... Come on, Mrs. Clark. Look. Look, you've got to understand. My husband was jealous. He spoiled everything. Every man I ever looked at. You don't know how it was. He ruined everything. He spoiled everything. It's the street of the hunter, Broadway, and the smile that's dropped at the tip of a hat. And the lights are flung from windows, out of doorways, and you walk a pavement speckled with a thousand colors. But between the lights, that's where the darkness is. It's Broadway, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway... My beat. Broadway's My Beat stars Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover with Charles Calvert as Tartaglia. The program was produced and directed by Elliot Lewis with musical score composed and conducted by Alexander Courage. Included in tonight's cast were Kathy Lewis, Vivi Janis, Anthony Barrett, Leo Cleary, Jack Crucian, and Ed Max. Jack Smith, Dinah Shore, Margaret Whiting, Bob Crosby, the Andrews Sisters, Lowell Thomas, Beulah, Ed Murrow. Anywhere else, they'd make up an all-star list for a week. But at CBS, the star's address, you can hear them every evening, Monday through Friday. Yes, every weekday evening, most of these same CBS stations bring you these top-ranking stars in their specialties. Music, comedy, top reporting. Be listening for Jack Smith, Dinah Shore, and Margaret Whiting. For Bob Crosby and the Andrews Sisters. For Beulah and for those great radio reporters, Lowell Thomas and Edward R. Murrow. Dan Coverly speaking. This is CBS, where yours truly, Johnny Dollar, brings adventure Saturday nights on the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>